So raptors. Yes. Let's talk about raptors a little bit. Okay, right? so when we talk about raptors, we're talking about our hawks, eagles, owls, and falcons. And these birds all have one major thing in common. Sometimes they're referred to as birds of prey because yeah. they're all carnivores. Okay. So they're gonna be eating other animals. But specifically, the characteristics that they all share, which make them great hunters, are gonna be their claws, which in these birds, we wow. call them talons. This is their most powerful weapon. And for most of the birds, it's what they use to catch and kill their prey. So not only do they have these sharp they nails sharp, on them, man. but they're also really powerful feet. So if you make a fist and squeeze as hard as you can, mm -hmm. that's your grip strength, right. okay? Probably the strongest person you know is about 100 pounds of pressure per square inch. Mm -hmm. But these birds, um, red-tailed hawks are probably two to 300 pounds wow. of pressure. How about that? Um, wow. But Man. our bald eagles and golden eagles, probably 10 times stronger than the strongest wow. person. They can do a thousand pounds of pressure per square inch. And that's enough wow. pressure to like crush, crush a baseball. Right. Oh yeah. my God, a so, baseball, how about that? Yeah, so try that at home, try crushing the baseball. <laughs> that's why you wear these gloves. <laughs> that's, that's right, that's <laughs> why we wear oh these gloves, God. that's right. Yeah. Um, so, but that's just one of their characteristics that make them great hunters. Wow. The second mm. one is going to be their sharp curved beak. That's cool. Okay. So that, um, looking at that curved beak, you know it's a meat eater. Okay. And they use that curved beak to um, tear their prey into smaller pieces if they need to. Okay. And then lastly, their eyesight. Most of these birds have really large eyes. They have really good eyesight, either seeing things at long distances or like our owls seeing in really low light. Okay. So those wow. basically, the eyesight, the um, sharp, curved beak and the talons are the three characteristics that make a raptor a raptor. All right, so what raptors can gardeners expect to find right here in the Mid-South? Okay, so in the Mid-South, we have a lot of different types of raptors, and it doesn't matter if you're in an urban environment or a more rural environment, okay. because we have raptors in both environments and sometimes the same raptors. Um, the most common hawks that we get here are red-tailed hawks okay. and red-shouldered hawks. Then we also have another group of raptors um, that like to eat other birds. So they're oh, wow. bird eating birds. Okay. Um, one, your namesake, the Cooper's hawk. Ah, um, how about is, that? Yeah, one okay. of our bird eating birds. Then we also have falcons. Um, so yeah. peregrine falcons, a lot of people know about those birds. Sometimes they um, will nest in big cities. But we also have things like the kestrel, which is a small insect eating raptor, yeah. and things like Mississippi kites, which uh -huh, are eating uh -huh. a lot of cicadas. Those are really fun to watch. They're really acrobatic. Then of course we have our eagles. We have our bald eagles, which along the Mississippi, their populations are definitely increasing and across the state of Tennessee and throughout the Mid-South as well. Okay. We also have golden eagles. They don't not as common here in the Mid-South, but you can sometimes get them in the winter time on short distance migration. And then we have our owls and we have a number of different owls in the region too. Um, and so that basically is just kind of an overview of some of the raptors we have in the Mid-South. Okay. Now, why would we want these raptors in our gardens? That's a great question. So one, they're just great to see and to watch, but also they're gonna be helping with rodent populations. So some of these raptors are eating things like mice and rats yes. and voles, which I know a lot of gardeners don't like. <laughs> yes, um, so yes. voles, and then also they're gonna be eating snakes, mm -hmm. like we talked about some of them eat other birds. And most of the time these animals, these birds are taking animals that are sick or they're old, um, and so they're actually helping to control um, disease in populations and also just help control, po um, especially rodent populations. Wow, which is good. Yeah. We definitely need that. All right. So how do we attract? you know, these raptors to our gardens? So there's a couple ways to attract them and it kind of depends on what sort of habitat you have. Okay. Um, but if you're in a more rural area, there are nest boxes that you can put up for some of our mm -hmm. owls, like the great horned owl, or even our smallest owl around here, the screech owl, they'll readily use nest boxes. But for our hawks that we really want to come and eat some of our rodent populations, one of the best things we can do is not to use rodenticides or uh, pesticides okay. because those pesticides are going to travel through the food chain. Mm -hmm. So if a red-tailed hawk sees a rat that's moving really sluggish, that's easy prey. Mm. Unfortunately, those um, 
uh, pesticides and rodenticides often move into the bird as well and, yeah. and often will kill the birds. So that's the number one thing we can do to help protect the birds. But we can also provide some good habitat, so large roosting trees and mm -hmm. nesting trees. I know somebody had a red-tailed hawk uh, in their yes, yard. They have uh, one. Yep. Uh -huh. They're probably uh, in the woods. Yeah. 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 Um and so they are nesting in urban areas too. Um mm -hmm. I read a story not too long ago about one of um our owls, the barn owl, actually they've nested in Yankee Stadium before. Um, mm -hmm. So they can definitely utilize some of our urban habitats as well. But um, if you feed birds, um, if you maintain bird feeders for our songbirds, a lot of times they're also go going to attract a Cooper's hawk ah, as well. Okay. Um, so they're not gonna decimate your bird populations. They're just taking birds here and there. So um, that's another way to actually bring in those larger birds of prey too. Wow, that's good stuff in here. Yeah. So I guess now we're gonna take a look at the owl. Yeah, so we're okay. going to take a look at um, one of our raptors that we can find here in the Mid-South and look at some of the really interesting characteristics that it has. Hi, so we have a friend with us, Mary. Yeah, so I brought um, a barn owl, B-A-R-N. B -A -R -N. Okay. And I always spell that because we have two owls in the Mid-South, a barn owl like this one and a barred owl, B-A-R-R-E-D. Ah. Okay. Um, so sound very similar, but two totally different um, birds. And barn owls in the Mid-South, you're gonna find these birds in more um, rural open areas. They like fields or meadows or oh, wetlands okay. to wetlands. do their hunting. Okay. Um, but definitely a friend to the um, farmer and the gardener. These birds love to eat um, shrews ah. and other small, um, they'll, they'll also eat mice and, and small mammals, but they have been documented, a pair of them, catching like up to 60. Uh, mouse size rodents in one that? night. That'll get rid of your voles for you. That's right. Good. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's for sure. <laughs> so I noticed, Mary, you have your glove on. That's right. Yeah. So like we talked about with raptors, this is an example of one of our raptors. They have really strong and powerful feet. Yeah. And wow. so in these talons, especially in barn owls, they have almost needle-like um, talons. So they can pierce and really hold on to their prey after they catch it. Wow. Um, you can also see her eyes. Yeah. And so we talked about these um, birds have really large eyes and they see pretty well. Um, owls, their eyes are actually locked in their head so they can't move their eyeballs around like oh. we can. So that's why they have to turn their heads yeah, so often. Well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and their eyes are so big compared to their, their body size. If we had eyes that same size, we would have like baseball size eyes. <laughs> yeah. How about that. Yeah, so unfortunately for this one and why she lives um, at Lichterman Nature yeah. Center is because she is an injured animal okay. that can't be released into the wild. It is against the law to keep these um, birds or even harass these birds. Um, wow. So she came to us because unfortunately she was hit by a car wow. and she is blind. Yeah. And cars unfortunately are um, one of the things that um, decreases their population. Wow. And it has to do with the way they see. So we have peripheral vision, we can see out of the corners of our eyes, but with these birds, because they have the round eyes, it's more like they have blinders on, so they don't see the cars coming until wow. it's too late. Golly, but man, that's, that's, that's good, stuff. good <laughs> yeah. stuff. Look, so how do we protect our pets you know, from these raptors? Okay, that's a great question, and we get that question quite a bit. Now, the one thing you have to remember, if you have a dog that's 20 plus pounds, mm. there's not a raptor out there that can carry off that dog. Okay. All right. <laughs> so our largest one is gonna be our great horned owl. And so maybe five or seven pounds is the maximum that that bird, five or seven, yeah, okay. and they probably can't fly off with that either. Okay. Now, if you have a small dog or kittens yeah. or puppies, the best thing to do is keep an eye on them if you do see raptor activity in your area whenever they're outside and especially at nighttime okay. because it's our owls actually that are mainly the culprits so of the owls. It is, yeah, the great horned what owl I would is say is, is probably the biggest culprit of that. So keeping your um, smaller dogs and, in, and cats inside at night. So watch over them at yeah. night for sure. Yeah, but most of the time these birds get blamed for stuff like that, but they're, you mm -hmm. know, a red-tailed hawk is taking something squirrel and chipmunk size, maybe a pound. Okay. Um, these birds are really deceiving. This bird um, might look like it weighs 20 plus pounds. It weighs between half a pound oh. and a pound and a half. Oh. And so um, if you think back to like elementary school, birds have hollow bones uh -huh. and feathers. So those don't weigh a lot. And then their bodies are actually pretty small. We'll see if she'll let me do this. So if you can see 
how deep of feathers she has. Uh, so right now uh -huh. is when I'm touching her body. Uh -huh. So she's like a finger deep of just feathers. So actually pretty light birds. So they're not gonna be able to take something that's five pounds. It's five times as much as they weigh. How about that? Very great lesson. Yeah. We appreciate that. I always learned a lot from you when you're here. So thank you much. Thanks and for thank having us. And thank you too, baby. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.